Uh, oh, welcome to another episode of the SEM podcast. That was Craig interrupting me. He's our guest today. Craig Stratton. The famous Craig Stratton. And uh, he was my MTC companion. So we'll get there. But Zach Hewlett is here too, hosting. So Craig, our format, we talk about how you ended up in Scotland. And then we skip over. Talk about what you've been up to since you got home, and then we'll go back and reminisce. So, if you want to start us out with getting the call, so hopefully you didn't start this podcast with me like fumbling around trying to get my <laughs> all recorded, hundred percent. Dude, I'm so excited. I hope we do, we do some post production. So. so, when I do Zoom calls, I make sure not to wear any pants. So, hopefully. <laughs> you guys got that. <laughs> You're welcome in advance. You might have to change your rating style, though. That's a little bit of PG-13 there. Well, let's see. I got my meeting. How how did I get my call? Well, I was out playing football at BOU Idaho, and I went up there for a semester. And my mom called me and said that my mission call had come, and I was standing there in, in pads. And with all the other LDS kids standing around, they really wanted to know what I, where I got called to. And they all kind of took guesses. They're like, Provo, Utah. I was like, I'm going to beat you up. No. And they're like, oh, Idaho. I was like, I'm going to beat you up too. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we got them on the call. They made me put my mom on speakerphone, which is hilarious because she's super sweet. And... They, they began to read it, and <laughs> my mom and my dad are both on the phone, and my mom starts reading it, and she starts crying. So you can't understand what she's saying. Her voice is getting higher and higher. <laughs> what? Hey, wait, what? And my dad's like, Scotland. I'm like, okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I said, I know my parents. I said, how long have you guys known? Like, I have, I know for a fact you opened this call without me, for sure. I made them swear they'd wait. There's no way they waited. No way they waited. They're like, two days. Two days? What? <laughs> two days. That's crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, I was excited to uh, to go to Scotland, you know? I, th that, I think that is a great missionary pick and opportunity. I think it's what every young missionary wants to hear somewhere really cool like that, Scotland. And and then, you know, you hear your buddies and they get called to other places, which is great. You know, it's all the same. Scotland's the best, but it's all the same. But Scotland's the best for sure. You know. Yeah, buddy. Amen. So left February. You got back to start school, right? You went back. One early, yeah, yeah. I the mission president had asked me enough times to extend my mission that I decided to do the opposite and go home early. <laughs> That's true, it's actually a true story. <laughs> he, he, he was in the interview, he asked several times for me to extend my mission, and uh, he said that he wanted to, to bring me to the home office last cent of my mission. And I said, I gotta go to school, man, like, I gotta go to school, you know, you know. And uh, I said, can I go to school and, uh, and go home a little bit early? And he was like, well, I want you to think about it and pray about it. And I was like, I did already, but okay. You know, and they asked me again. He, he said that he really would like me to stay, uh, extend my mission. And dude, there's no way I had to get back to school, you know? So went home. I think it was like two weeks, something like that. Okay. So start us there. What you been up to? Dude, I've been watching these podcasts and we're all getting really old. What is going on? <laughs> Dude. I like, you know, I look at the title, I'm like, hey, you know, elder, whatever. Or, and I look at it, I'm like, what? I'm like, how many years has it been? I'm like, crap, I probably look like that too. Is it 20 years? Shoot. All right. Well, so. A lot has happened. A lot has happened uh, since my mission. Um, 
Well, I went to school, finished school. I you went back to BYU, Idaho. I did. I finished that. Okay. And then I thought I wanted to go to Provo for a little bit. And I, I got accepted there and I was going to go. And I went down there for a little bit to hang out. And I just didn't really like it. That and so my dad's a professor or was a professor. And, you know, he loves to spend time with his kids, which is awesome. It's great. But I'm in college and independent. So I like to, you know, do my own thing. My my dad paid for other college kids schooling. I paid my own way, 100%. I just did everything my own way. And it was, it was a lot harder, but it was a lot more fulfilling for me. Uh, so he actually decided to take a sabbatical, kind of like a, you know, they can give you a mission calling. And because he was a professor, they decided to put him to work at the, at the medical school or whatever the equivalent is at Provo because he was a medical teacher, medical school teacher at University of Reno, Nevada. He's like, great news, son. I decided to, you know, to come work at Provo at the same time that you're going to go to school there. I'm like, oh, no, great. You know, <laughs> so I quickly I was like, oh, I can't. I've got I'm definitely staying in Idaho. So I stayed in Idaho, finished school there. And then I drive down to see my parents. That was great. Um, let's see. After that, I gosh. I came out to South Carolina and I I started working. And I, I would stay on the East Coast. Built a business here about 16 years ago for security and solar. We grew. In 2010, we declared a corporation. And we have grown and grown to where we're in several states now. And we are Prosper Security and Solar. And it's what I do for a living. I married a wonderful woman from Arkansas. And we have, we've had three boys. We have a uh, a genius ten year old who is by far more mature than me, by far, <laughs> by far. He is always correcting me. I might slip up and say you know, a little bit of hell or dang it or whatever, and dude, he's all over me, man. He's just like, Dad, you can't say that. I'm like, Good luck, You're right? So I drive across the dam every day. My dad has the old joke about the dam, damn it. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, I don't know if that's appropriate for you. I have no idea. But that, <laughs> that's just who I am. Anyway, my, my son gets all over me on that, dude. He, I, I get in big trouble for my 10-year-old. Um, and then I, we had twin boys. We had twin boys. So we've got two boys that are that are five now, which is crazy. And they are... Have you ever seen the, let's see, the Raptors in Jurassic Park? <laughs> Those are my sons. <laughs> so they. <laughs> what one a description. Right here. And then like a freaking flying monkey bat. <laughs> right up the stairs, dude. The other one gets you. It is crazy in my house. I love it. It's nuts. They're wrestling 24 hours a day. I'm, I, we're very, we put them to bed early tonight so we could do this call. Otherwise, all you would hear. You'd be like, Dad, Dad, London has something, something, crash, 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 boom, 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 <laughs> give it back, you know, you know, whatever, for like hours, dude. So, yeah, we've Fantastic. got the we, uh, we raised them, we have raised them well in the church, and we're all very active, and we fulfill callings. We are permanently in with the youth for like several years in a row since forever, and we love that, actually. Uh, we've I've been the scout master and just everything, everything with the youth for for several years now, and I don't know, life is good. Oh, awesome. We're enjoying life, working hard, and raising our babies. And so, what part of South Carolina do you live in? I live in Lexington, Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, we we've, right. we've lived all over. We uh, we live down in um, Johns Island and the Mount Pleasant. We have a home down there. And when we had the twins, because I was a very large baby, to kind of give you a preface, a, I came out 
a month and a half early at eight pounds, nine ounces. My brother was 14 pounds. My other brother was 13 pounds. Huge freaking babies. My wife's little. We're finding out we're having twins kind of a little bit late, oddly enough. The doctors were really freaked out. They're like, why is this baby so big? You know, well, because there's two of them, but they were like <laughs> super freaked out because my wife is growing this enormous cone of a watermelon at the speed of light. It's like it's going to come out. It's going to come out right now through the stomach wall, alien style help. <laughs> and I remember like my poor wife for like several visits was straight up getting offended. Like they're like, how much are you eating? Like, how big are these babies? She's like, not very much. Like, I I don't know what's going on. She's like, it's his fault. And, then, <laughs> and, and we found out later on that uh, it was, there was two in there. And they came out. We, they came out early, too. They came out like a, about a month and a half early. And they were both in, in eight pounds. Oh my, my gosh. gosh. My we've got pictures, dude, going on our, my wife's Facebook. They were just the big ins, dude. Big old little fatties. <laughs> and uh <laughs> she's got the big shoulders, I guess, but it was crazy because there was a 30 minute span between the first birth and the second birth. Super weird. And you could just see um it was Grayson. Um, came out second and he was just like stretching out like oh my gosh there's so much room in here now because he was he was super super just cram packed in there with his big brother roman who just out muscled them and everything space and everything else i'm sure so yeah wow there's your tangent all right that that's amazing like 16 17 pounds of baby (laughs) <laughs> whoa oh okay so the the segue to what i was trying to get to is we moved to columbia and we moved to columbia because of these monstrous children that we had and um we moved closer to her family so they could help uh, and it's been great it's been great we bought the home that we're in um purchased the home next to us and we rented that one out to her family and um that the cousins are playing every day and hopping in the pool and chilling and doing all the things. It's, 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 it's an awesome, awesome kid childhood 24 seven. So it's great. Cool. Well, go back now and start the MTC. You can Dude, skip I, the MTC if you want, but walk no. us through areas, companions. Dude, my shrink said I shouldn't talk about this again. I was kidding. Uh, your, yeah. shrink, your shrink said this is therapy right here. Yes, it, like you said, <laughs> man, try to forget the ever. I'm just kidding. No, my, I loved my mission. I, I really enjoyed it. It was cool. Um, gosh. Think back. You know, I had been thinking about it here. I mean, this whole thing kind of stresses me out because I'm kind of bad with names. And I, I hate to admit that. Bro, I, I remember most of my companions, but I some of them I straight up don't forget. I I don't remember their name. I remember their face, and I also realized I probably have early onset uh, dementia, and I'll forget this even happen. This may not be happening right now at all. I have no idea right now. That's how old we are. So, all right, beginning of my mission went to Preston. Preston was cool. It was little, little place. We we. Me and you, um, we were first. We were first companions, right? Yep. Yep. And you know, MTC companionships, they they totally don't count. I mean, they count, but uh, it's like you're everybody's a companion, like all thirty of you. You know what I mean, or whatever it was. And we had our we had our companionship, and we had Elder Osmond, and we had Bill. Who else did we had? Half. Boy. Bass. Malloy, Bass, Clarkson, Bathroom. Clarkson, gosh, Stever, Stever, <laughs> dude, Green, Parmenter, Parmenter, Green. Green, dude, I love Green. He is, he is so funny. All right, well, yeah, we had a great group. We really did. Um, 
A few highlights I remember from the MTC. Let's see. I remember I got asked to be a district leader over MTC, which really, it doesn't count, but it was cool. You know, I, what, I mean, what did, I don't even remember. What did I even do as a district leader? Nothing. Made sure nobody snuck down and got cookies at midnight. Like, that's pretty much it. Like, I was, I was elder Lamo at the time because, like, I was like, okay, guys totally keep the rules they're like yeah whatever i want to go get a cookie it's 1 a.m i'm like better not so (laughs) (laughs) um mtc was cool um a lot of class time i think every elder ever says that's not my learning style right you probably hear that all the time it's not my learning style i fell asleep during class or whatever i i really really actually did fall asleep a few times and I got in massive trouble for it. They're like, Elder, you're the district leader. You can't fall asleep during class. And I was like, what? Oh, where am I? Oh, sorry. Yes. And I, Nephi. Da, 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 da. So it was good. We, we went through the scriptures a lot. We, we bore testimonies a lot. We got to meet other, a lot of other uh, nationalities. We, I remember when we went outside to take pictures, a funny random story about farting. Um, we had a Italian elder who <laughs> were taking the picture and he just, are we, is this, this type of platform? I don't want to like, okay, yes. we can do fart jokes. That's cool. All right. So it was an Italian elder and we were, we were standing there and he just let the fly dude. I mean, it was cafeteria, loud smelling yuckiness. <laughs> he goes, a duke. It's a duke in the bushes. Do you remember that? I don't remember this. Yeah, remember that, dude. For two years, that was the ongoing joke we'd always have. Whenever we'd rip one, we go, "Elder, it's a duke. A duke in the bushes." It's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. And, and, and it was, it was, it was really funny, and you know. Yeah, he cleared that area out real well. So that was <laughs> what I remember about the MTC. It was it, it went by pretty quick. I remember Elder Osmond uh, singing and playing the piano on the side when he could, whenever he could, really. I also remember his really oddly long patriarchal blessing that would literally put you to sleep. It was great, but it was like six pages, dude. Mine says, you're going to be able to, yes, you'll raise kids, you're going to die, amen. I'm like, cool, it's like a paragraph. <laughs> I might die tomorrow, it kind of seems like. Am I, what? You know, but it, it was cool. So, yeah, I remember his really long picture of blessing. Um, you remember taking a swing at me? At you? Yeah. I, you're lying. Yeah, we were. It was during athletic time, so I guess boxing or whatever. I wanted to play basketball. You wanted the district to play chair soccer, and I was like, "This is my last chance to play basketball. I'm playing basketball." I don't. You took a swing at me, you know, <laughs> dude. That that has to be somewhat fabricated. There's no way. <laughs> I'm just like, "Hey, older, go to sleep." Yeah, right. Really? No way. There was no. There was no contact. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> there's no way. There's like there's like no lead up to it. You're just like, dude, you totally took a swing at me. Because I wanted to play basketball. I'm like, I don't know, man. I call BS on that one. And then we yeah. and then we raced from the chapel back to the MTC and I are, totally like tore my hamstring. Are we twelve? Like were we yep. grown up men? <laughs> Like obviously you weren't offended that bad. Like, obviously we were being playful because we raced. Like that's we how raced back, dude. That's how boys are. <laughs> I I kind of remember there was like a an awkward elder who was it that did actually was it did actually hit you? Did you uh, like it was on the stairs. He, or something? Uh, there. I think I know who you're talking about. He was really awkward, and he thought he was really awesome for like eating a yogurt in under 30 seconds. <laughs> and so I 
I pounded one in like five seconds, and he, that made him pretty mad. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, and then like he turned around on the stairs. It was pretty accidental, but I think he like ran into you really hard or hit you or something. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you, maybe you got us confused. I don't remember taking a swing at you, dude. <laughs> I didn't take a swing at you. No way. I'm like, let's fight first. We race. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Did you really pull your ham? Yeah, dude, that hurts. It was hurting. Did, did to, you to go on the stairs was very painful. <laughs> We we're so retarded. Like that is the most retarded thing we've ever. Well, that's cool. All right, moving on. So that was yep. the MTC spirit was good. Um, we read a lot in hot rooms. Got to meet. We got to make a get really close to other elders and took a lot of pictures. And I guess I took a freaking swing at you, which I don't think is real. I don't know. Prove it. Prove it. I don't know. That's all I gotta say. But we did race. I do remember the race, and I remember you tore your hamstring because you were. I had to wait for you at the top of the stairs a lot, so and at the bottom and at the end of the hallway. But you were great. You're a great, you know, companion. And I remember you're just so tall. You're super tall. You still super tall? Yeah, still super tall. It's <laughs> awesome. I was I was thinking about it today after the MTC. We never like even served around each other really Bro, like opposite ends of the mission the whole time we like never saw each other again pretty nuts yep so right after the mtc let me think my very first area was our bro in montrose with um elder tyler taylor elder taylor and i was his greening and he was really excited to have me and I was excited to, to be out on a mission and Arbroath Montrose was the the cliffs of Arbroath so you had the flat and it overlooked the ocean and it was those beautiful cliffs and that flat was really it was smoking nice I don't know how they got that that flat but it was hardwood floors dude I we I served in some freaking dungeons after that but that 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 was that was like dude, this is a mission all oh, right, we got this. Oh yeah, you know, like it was sweet, you know. Um, I remember a couple, a couple things. We, so we on my mission, I worked, I worked really hard. Um, I was a bit of a rule keeper for the most part. We worked really hard, and and we had a lot of great results. Um, or long term, my mission, I got that from, I think, I think Elder, my, you know, my trainer kind of installed that in me because he worked me to the freaking bone. He worked really hard. In fact, we back then we did it kind of old school. We kept we kept our chapin hours, our tracting hours, and he was a big fan of the seventy two hour knocking freaking check mark. So we not we not knock the goal was sixty four. So yeah, yep, that's and, overachieving. And he wanted to make sure we hit seventy two. He wrote it in his green thing, and <clears throat> dude, we did, man. We we knocked and knocked and knocked and knocked and. Went through a couple of pairs of shoes and a couple uh, pairs of, of uh, suit pants. Went from black to gray from all the rain and, and wind and everything. And we would do our, our charity once a week. And we skipped lunches all the time, man, because he just wanted to keep working. So we did it. It was a really great time. Uh, and it was after our first move was when I got. I was set up to be, a, I guess, a senior elder or whatever. And so I didn't have him very long. I had him for a short period of time, and he set up a routine. And I just kind of kept following it. So up in our growth in Montrose, we, next I got um, Elder Hill. Do you guys remember Elder Hill? Do both y'all? Both y'all are just like. That's no, we're, no, we're not. No, you're not. He's on here next week. Just kidding. Um, Elder Hill. So Elder Hill was a really good missionary, especially at the end of his mission. Okay. And uh, we're, I we're not, you know. 
Dude, karma's real. I'm sure people talk crap about me on this podcast. Mr. I took a swing at you. Never happened. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to sit here. We're just, we're a bunch of young men figuring stuff out. And he had, I think he had had several moves before. Um, I think six in a row, something really just kind of crazy. Elder Hill was cool. Um, early on, I mean, I'm just going to say, is Elder Vereen still big enough to beat us up, all of us? Oh, yeah. Oh, I better not tell the truth then. Crap. You better tell the truth. He had, he had me some secret op missions that people don't know about to this day. I'm just going to say it. So it started early. It was he. Gosh. I don't want to pay anybody to give light. He said, he said, Elder, if you can't make this work, I'm sending them home. And I was still green behind the ears. And I had a lot of pressure for a, for a young man. He said, just, just do what your trader taught you to do. Work them hard and figure it out. I'm like, this, what? You know, so Elder Hill, you know, got there and, um, it was crazy. It, it was a lot of craziness. It was a lot of uh, let's listen to audio books. Let's uh, let's wake up at ten or eleven or whatever. And then I was I was I was pretty strict. So president told me I could do whatever we had to do to get busy and get to work. So there were a few mornings which is not missionary approved, I'm sure, where I flipped over a couple beds, get him out of bed, and he <laughs> he'd get up and you know he ticked at me or. He'd hop in the shower, and luckily we had the ability to turn off the hot and cold on the outside. And so we, we got him out of the shower a little bit early. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, you know, working hard, skipping lunch, and then just doing that, um, kind of losing yourself in the work. You, you gotta, in order to to be built up right, you gotta you gotta break. You gotta break. And so I didn't really know what I was doing. I just prayed and i asked the lord and i remember specifically the prompting that we needed to be we needed we needed to break and remold in the in the correct way so we worked very very hard we knocked so many doors so many hours and we ended up becoming very close and and i got to learn a lot about him as a person and i got to see uh the spirit of service really install in him and we, we taught um, a young family, and we got to baptize a young a young gal named Melissa. And we later on, her her brother ended up getting baptized as well. And it was cool. It was great. And then I had him for I think two moves, and then directly after that, the president was happy and made him district leader over somewhere somebody somewhere and then he ended up becoming zone leader later on and and he was my zone leader for a while which was which was really cool i got to see him in that light as a leader and he excelled he did very well and he was he really was very much a a a, a different person and and he did he did a great job so that was cool um so we worked hard. I did that. And then after Elder Hill, let me think. I went I went to Ayrshire and I was I was given Elder Bear. That's right. And I, I really enjoyed my time with Elder Bear. One thing that Elder Bear does not like is somebody with an ego as big as his because he's a little guy with a bear ego, elder bear, get it? <laughs> and uh, he hates to be picked up, which I did all the time. <laughs> I go behind him and I just pick him up. His little feet were kicking and he gets so pissed off. Dude. And so he it, that was our main source of contention was I would just randomly pick him up all the time. Uh, he just, he hated that, dude. Um. <laughs> but we, you know, we worked really hard. Um, again, again, um, I 
president called me and again he said this elder's coming off of an elder that just got sent home from his mission early uh the elder hill scenario went really well and he said i i want you to do it again he said i want you to treat him like you're like that he's green and this is his first day and i'm just like and he's like of course this is stays between us and you know i'll check in with you once a week or whatever i'm like okay <laughs> i'm like okay well i guess i know my role like you know missionary drill sergeant or whatever which isn't really my personality for the most part i'm actually i joke around a lot you know but whatever anyway so elder elder bear and i we got together and he loved to have fun he was really into having fun, having a laugh, and uh, he was really funny. And he he had a very interesting look on on how missionary work was, was supposed to go at the beginning. There was a Thursday, um, what is it like board game afternoon? There was a daily nap. He ate and, okay. When I say this, I'm not underestimating. He ate an obscene amount of peanut butter and jelly. Not a little bit. A freaking obscene amount. When he would sweat, he smelt like peanut butter. And <laughs> he, he, I would watch him at lunch eat four peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And I'm just like sitting there like oh my gosh and it was cool at the beginning but dude like two months in that's all i've seen him eat i'm like you're gonna die you're definitely gonna die 100 percent. you're you're gonna die like right now no way you're gonna live well he's you know he's i guess i guess he took that as a challenge so dude, he started eating it for breakfast and lunch and like he would pack it everything so like peanut butter and jelly dude to this day, I can't eat peanut butter and jelly. I used to love it. To this day, I'm just like, ugh, ugh. like I can't, dude. Every it was just too much. But was it the good kind of peanut butter though? No, it was the cheap stuff, dude. He went, he always went super cheap, you know. Oh man, you know he he talked about how he was raised and, and he wasn't he didn't wasn't raised with a lot of money or anything and he was frugal and and he, he, his eating habits would show it. He would buy the cheapest crap in bulk and just pound it for months and that was great whatever you know <laughs> cool um geez i couldn't I, handle the british version of peanut butter like skippy peanut butter that you get from like sainsbury's or if somebody would had a costco membership it was like seeking out a piece of gold from somebody when you can pour your peanut butter out on your bread that is not allowed <laughs> <laughs> in front of me that is disgusting that's not edible get that trash out here um so we worked so we worked really really hard um he had this really weird assortment of look like a collector's item of like area material it was really weird and it was from previous elder or whatever and it was like stop at every freaking bus stop and we just trashed it. I was like, let's get that out of here. Let's just let's start over. So we started over and it was a lot of knocking and a lot of a lot of not necessarily what you would consider success if you had been spending most of your time with members. Now back back then, missionary work was very different than it is today. Today I can't get the missionaries to leave me alone. Because all they do is hang out with the members, which is cool. I love that. I kids love that. We we were not allowed to do that. We had to knock. Elder pre president would tell us, "Do not be spending your time with, with current, you know, with with current members unless they're an actor or whatever. Then you have a certain amount of time to do that every week." So he came from doing only that to doing nothing but prospecting, and so he had a hard time with that. Um, I'm taller than he is, a little bit bigger. My my strides longer, so often he was like running. And then I pick him up, he get mad, and then repeat. So that was a lot of our days. But we we had the spirit, and it was really good. And uh, I actually I love Elder Bear. I really do. We we joke probably because we we both have that that alpha male alpha 
male problem, but uh, dude, I love Elder Bear. Great guy, awesome mission, awesome missionary. And right after that, you know, as we worked so hard, I think he went from playing too much to working too hard, which was kind of the point. To this day, he probably doesn't know that that was what I was told to do because I really didn't really have to, a desire to do that, but I was kind of told to do that and I would I had to report back once a week. And so we overworked him. And I remember I was with him for a long time. And I to this day he doesn't know this. He uh he he would complain to president on occasion because I was I was tough and we would stick by the book and, and we feel the spirit and we just work really hard. President would tell me, and I'm like, he, you know, he nicely told the elder bear, no, like work it out with your companion, you know, or whatever. And then he would tell me, this is exactly, he, he said, I said, is, is he, you know, he, we both work really hard and he's done great. He goes, he's not ready yet. So we spent another two months together and uh, we worked really hard. And then after that, I'll tell you what, man, he, he went from being elder trainer's protege, all funs and giggles and high fives and bus stops and hanging out with future wives or whatever to, <laughs> to super missionary. He ended up being super stud missionary of the year, being our AP at the end, you know, awesome, awesome elder. And so, um, Mission accomplished for that, for sure. That was great. That was great. We had actually, we, we had, he probably talked about uh, Kintenji, uh, Fatsi Kintenji. And I, oh, one more thing. <laughs> he had the biggest crush on Sister Hearth, Hearth or whatever. Was that, is it Hearth? What, what is it? Heart? Heap. 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 Bola Moglova, she's awesome. Sister, he, he had the biggest freaking crush, dude. I I had a, I swear. I to this day he probably speaks of her with fondness, which is cute. Um, he had the biggest crush on her, dude, which which was sweet. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we we went. Um, we had a we had a great morning lesson. We were working out like weird missionaries do with jugs of water and string and a broomstick and freaking dork town, you know, and uh, we're like, just totally works. It doesn't work. Um, but we had the inspiration to uh, go visit um, who sister, who sister Heap and Bogomola were teaching at the time. They, they went kind of cold for a while. And it just came out of thin air. Number one, that's out of our area. Luckily, at the time, I think, I think I, I'm pretty sure I was district leader then because I had tons of sister missionaries in my district, which is great, but also punishment because you have to carry around a liter of, of blessing oil, you know, because for all the blessings you give, you know, kind of like the, the dispenser was the joke. But I gave more blessings than I've probably given the rest of my life, and I gave a lot of blessings. So um, we got President's permission to go out of our area and go visit the Katenjis. And we had just finished a early morning scripture study about the promptings of the Spirit. And we were talking about it, and it kind of just came to me. It was a very strong prompting, and we both felt good about it, that we should go visit them. There was no rhyme or reason, nothing deeper than that. So we, I called president, asked permission, and, you know, he said yes, obviously, you know. And so we got on a train. We drove, and we got went two hours down the road into the sister's area and just felt like go show up. And we went and, you know, it, it was such a great experience. We went and we knocked on their door 
and Otki answers the door, and this dude had the biggest biceps of any human being on the planet at the time. This dude was so muscular and strong, and he had married a gal who was American, and she was raised LDS, and he was being taught by the sisters at the time, and I guess... He, that had gotten a little bit cold and they weren't keeping up with the meetings or whatever. But I remember when we, we felt that the prompting to go. So we just obeyed. And we, when we went there and we knocked on the door and they answered, uh, this grown large man, he started crying on the spot. And I was, I was pretty floored, but the spirit was really strong. You know, when it's so strong, you're just kind of buzzing. It was it was tangible. And he said, elders come in, and, and, and they're both crying at that point. He said, we just found out that we need to move. And last night, I prayed that if this, and obviously it doesn't always work out like this. In fact, it rarely does. But he said, if this church is true, Please send us help to move everything that we have to move in a hurry. Well, we were, so I, I'm a firm believer if it wasn't us, it was somebody else. So we were blessed to be able to be the ones that listened to the Spirit that day. And we went and rolled up our sleeves and we moved them. You know, we packed them up and moved them. And then, you know, we sat down and helped, helped the sisters. It was their baptism. Nobody's taking that away. Totally theirs. But we helped um, to, to teach him the remainder of lessons. As, as you know, his wife would, would lean on the sisters and, and he would, would lean on the brother, if you will, for, for different types of, of, of needs. And so um, he ended up finishing his his lessons and getting committed to baptism. And then he asked Elder Bear to baptize him, which was awesome. And they they got to get baptized in uh, like a pool with a waterfall type of thing. It was pretty cool. And I got a really sick blender. He gave me a blender. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. The, the real story is he did give me a blender. And if you know... If you've heard the stories about uh, Fatih, he's just funny, loud, and just like straight up. He told the older bear to, to dunk him and hold him under because he has a lot of sins, right? And he goes, you have to hold me down long time. I, I had a lot of sins. He's like, no, elder, long time. And elder bear's like, no, you know? And then he comes up to me. He's like, elder bear got to baptize me. Here's a blender. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for my blender. And he goes, and I named my son Stratton. I'm like, what? He's like, yes, his name is Stratton Contingy. I'm like, whoa, okay. I, thank you for the blender. Just kidding. I said, wow, that's <laughs> awesome. So he, to this day, you know, they got a kid, uh, he's grown up. I haven't really kept tabs on it. I saw him on Facebook. His name is Stratton. That was quite the compliment. And um, they're a great little family out there in the gospel. So that was a really cool experience that, uh, that we shared. Um, all four of us missionaries, Sister Heap and Elder Bear and myself and Sister Bogomolova. So after that, let's see. <clears throat> Gosh. After that, Ayrshire, I went to... Let's see. I went down south to Dumfries. Dumfries. Yeah. Gosh. Wow. I haven't thought about this stuff in freaking years, man. All right. I went down to Dumfries. Like, for real. Like, it's crazy. I went down to Dumfries. And all... Okay. I have a lot of great memories about Dumfries. Um, that area... Was was really cool. We we were given a vehicle 
down there, which is like, oh man, you got a car? Wow, missionaries' car is awesome. Whatever. We, you could drive two hours in any direction, and that was our area. So we covered like the whole southern portion of of that. I didn't really know how to drive stick, and I definitely didn't know how to drive stick opposite in a little baby car that I couldn't fit into. So, like, my shoulder would hit the window, my other shoulder was hitting my the other the other elder's ear, and I'm just like do 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 little do 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 you know, and <laughs> just clown car and it around, and uh, we drove all over, man. We drove all over, and we we got an opportunity to knock a lot and. We we found another another great gal and and we baptized her and um I got Elder Aurelio. You guys remember Elder Aurelio? Yes. Aurelio, Elder Aurelio, dude. He corrected me every day because I couldn't say his name. I was like Elder Aurelio. No, 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 Aurelio. I'm like I'm pretty sure I said that. Aurelio. No, no, <laughs> Aurelio. I'm like this is not going to work <laughs> aurelio like aurelio i was like no i'm like son of a gun here we go <laughs> he was awesome kindest sweetest just best dude ever he came directly on his mission after being converted which is hardcore like catholic family family disowns him and he is just like nothing but smiles and ready to learn. And he didn't know a lot about the gospel, not tons, you know, because, I mean, he really was just baptized. And, and here he is already serving a mission. And, um, dude, I think I actually think about him all the time because I I think about how good of a person he was, his goodness, his, you know, he was very genuine and kind. Um, he didn't have all the knowledge or all the skills that a lot of the elders today now have, but he was a great missionary in his own right. And it kind of goes to show you yeah, that the Lord can really use anybody to do great things. And Elder Aurelio, true story, couldn't drive. Wasn't allowed to drive. No, I didn't know this. Wasn't allowed to drive. I didn't know this, okay, for the record. Um, but he told me that he didn't know how to drive, but wanted to learn how to drive. Um, <laughs> so, so, you know, we go out there and, and we go round and about and we hit a roundabout. He stalls it. You know, we, we go on the highway. We hit another roundabout. He stalls it. And just like a lot of, you know, and, and he really never did get a hang of it because he kind of psyched himself out for a little bit. And then I came to find out the first thing the president said, he's like, you're not, you're not letting him drive, right? <laughs> what? Like, this has to come with a freaking warning label. What do you mean? You know? And he's like, he's like, don't, don't, don't let him drive. I'm like, okay. So I had to drive the whole rest of the mission both ways everywhere we went. I was a pro I was a professional chauffeur. Uh, it was really interesting. One night we came out of our flat. We had appointments all day. We came out. We looked down, and there is all this broken glass on the ground. And we're looking around. I'm like, "Where's our car?" And I was like, "Elder Aurelio, where'd you park the car?" He's like. You drive. I don't put you know spicy Italian. I'm <laughs> like, got it. Where the freak is our car? And we like, I'm like, maybe I have some of amnesia, dude. I'm like walking around the block, like, and did did I get hit on the head with a coconut? Like, <laughs> where is the car, dude? Sure enough, and finally, you know, because I was waking up, finally, I was like, our car got jacked, like it's stolen. <laughs> and so we came and stole the elder's car. Dude, who does that? So um, the chief of police at the time happened to be LDS. And he took that personally. He goes, elders, we will get them. I'm like, okay, whatever, you know. 
Like this is super crazy. And it came to find out that this uh, duo stole like about 14 vehicles that night. They would drive it up to like a little ridge or cliff, steal the stereo out, put it in neutral, push the car down this hill, and they just jacked all the radios. I guess radios were worth something back then. So the mission car, dude, the palm of freaking ravine crunched up like a tin can, you know? And so oh insurance kicks in or whatever, and, and they, they, we get a new car. So I just, I'll never forget that. Like somebody stole the mission car. What happened to it? It's where, you know, like, what? All right. So then let's see. After Elder Aurelio and I, we, we had a great time. I, I've got a lot of family genealogy there in, in Dumfries. So I got to take some some family photos of our family tree and, and go to the uh, original site where, where like my great, great, great grandfather had a house. And you see like the foundation. I swear it's like the size of a room. You're like a whole family freaking living here. That's crazy. And, um, Okay, so right after that, we were getting ready to move. Yes, we we're getting ready to move. And the most random thing happened. Our mission phone rings. <laughs> I answer it, and it's Donnie Osmond. I'm like, hello, hi. Like, what? Like what is happening? And and his son had served there before us, right? So Brandon had served there before us in Dumfries. He was looking for his son. Whatever. I didn't know parents could call in. That's cool. I get Donnie Osmond can. That's the exception, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, he I could tell I could tell he was like in his voice, he's like, crap, I got caught. So he tried to play it off. He's like, How's it going, Elder? How's your mission? How's I'm like, it's great, Mr. Donnie Osmond. My mom would love to find out that we talked on the telephone. <laughs> so like, it was cool. We had a great conversation. He talked to me for about 30 minutes about this side or the other. And uh, I told him, I said, I think, I think your son has been banished to the islands for being too attractive and popular. He's up in Shetland. And he's like, yeah, I heard their paparazzi out there is getting kind of crazy or whatever. I was like, yeah, I think that's where he's at. He's like, do you have their number? I'm like, nope. I'm like, but let me get you the president's number. He's like, no, that's okay. Got to go. <laughs> <laughs> he dodged out like a bullet, dude. That was so funny. I'm like, okay. That was, <laughs> that was something. And I, I, I wish I would have written in my diary more. But that day, I said, dear diary. Daddy Osmond called me. I am special and complete. Love <laughs> me. And so if I die today, I am fulfilled. Anyway, so that, that was cool and random. Uh, after Dumfries, I went. Um, it's getting kind of late here. So I'm kind of I'm trying to think here. We went up to. What happened? What happened after Dumfries? I got I I went to Glasgow. That's right. So served in Glasgow. And in Glasgow, who did I have? Gosh, try to remember. Parmenter. You remember Parmenter? Anybody? Oh yes. Yeah. Bro, Parmenter. I actually loved a par mentor. A lot of people joked because he, I mean, dude, dudes like that, they end up winning in life. This dude's like a doctor now. He's crushing it. He's great. I don't know. Maybe that's not true. I'm just going to say that for the sake of what I'm about to say. Okay. So elder Renaissance guy, right? Super sweet elder. Just wanted to talk about LARPing. I didn't know what LARPing was at the time. I still really don't. But I guess it's role playing, dork style, with like wizard hats and like hala hala who and fake swords and crap. And they get into it for like a straight 48 hour and just like 
oh golly like dude like <laughs> if you talk about it one more time i swear like <laughs> <laughs> so i i learned a lot about that and you know we were two very different people but he was very eager to work really hard at the end of his mission because he um he hadn't really had much success and um, i think he's a convert to the church and i think he even ended up going home and baptizing his mom into the church i think you got the name wrong elder parmenter yeah he was in our group oh wait no uh he was a little guy percy no elder it's a Percy. There was a Percy. He's little. He's really short. Super nerdy. Talked about freaking LARPing all the time. So, no, I remember Parmenter. Parmenter was like, played football, was a lineman, right? Is that the guy? Maybe. That's, help me. That's more fitting. Help me. Help. I just know it wasn't Parmenter. I don't know who it was. <laughs> it was um, Elder Percy, then, right? Starts with a P. Sounds and good. Stop it. It sounds better than Parmenter. <laughs> no, I remember Parmenter now. He he was in our group. Parmenter yep. played some football. And he was he was a, he, Yes! That's him. Percy. Percy. <laughs> Dude, did you see that? It, it, all right. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Okay. okay. Had to pull out the old We're on the right page now. Christmas. So there are there are a few things you'll learn about Jack. One is that when he is annoyed, he has a hard time hiding it on his facial expressions. <laughs> and he and I, I am one of his soft heels. It's super clear. But when you stick me and Percy in the same room as him, it's more than just a zoom off button. It is a screaming into a pillow at night, wishing the demons would be gone. Ha! You know, but Percy, <laughs> Percy was a great guy. Uh, he was he was awkward and 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 super dorky and I just kind of we worked really hard and we ended up knocking down a street into uh, a flat at, at the bottom. We knocked on the door. I'll never forget the mail slot opens up and they go, "What do you want?" And we're like, "Hello," and we're like. Elders of the Church of Jesus Christ are saints, you know, here to all the things. And I'm like, can we come in and talk to you? And they said, she said, no. I said, can we come back? She said, no. I <laughs> said, can we come back and meet you out in the hallway next week and talk to you about Jesus Christ? And she said, will you leave? I said, yes. And she said, the next week. We'll come in the hallway. We'll talk. It's great. So we <laughs> we go and and her her daughter and herself are refugees uh, from like South Africa or something. Uh, her last name was Chamungwa, and she had awesome food. A lot of plantains involved. Didn't know what a plantain was until that day. Took a bite out of one. It's not a banana. It's not a giant banana, guys. It's <laughs> super disgusting. It's not a giant banana. All right. But it looks like a giant freaking banana for giants. Um, and uh, Sister Chamungwa, uh, we taught her in the gospel straight up in the hallway. And then we gradually got invited and, and we got to uh, teach her um, and her daughter. And we ended up uh, baptizing them. And, and Elder. Percy got an opportunity to baptize one, and I baptized the other one. And that was a really great opportunity and farewell for him because that was his last area before he went home. And now I can say he did end up baptizing his mom. I remember that because I talked to him after the mission and some what he's been up to. And he's like going to medical school and super LARPing. I'm like, oh, cool. And uh, <laughs> awesome, uh, but he knew I'd, jo I'd joke about it, and he, he was all right with it, you know. Anyway, 
but yeah, and he ended up baptizing mom. Great guy. Awesome. Yeah. So he had, we worked hard, had a great opportunity. All right. So I'm halfway over halfway through my mission at that point. I, I had some leadership positions and a lot of like, you know, special ops from president Vereen's behind the scenes, like break his, you know, break him down or build him up elder or whatever. So, he he brings me in the mission home, and not a lot of people know the story. I think only one elder elder knows this, and it is Elder Malloy. And he said, um, he sat me down. And he said, you know, I know I've been I've been working you hard, and I know that you are, you know, how are you? And I'm like, I'm kind of tired. Like I'm 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 knocking a lot. I'm I'm doing a lot more type of those type of activities, kind of setting good work habits or whatever and we've had we had great success i mean almost every area we went to we we baptized and did great uh but i was already very exhausted he said okay he said this is what we're gonna do he said let me show you the process i i go through to choose companionships for elders and select area he says i feel inspired to free i'm gonna leave you my office then i'm going to take me to the dining room and he left me there he said i want you to pray and to think um i want you to pick a companion and an area i said this is so weird okay cool let's let's do it you know and um in his office i remember looking at the board and i saw elder malloy dude me and malloy are, are very similar in, in nature i i mean i don't vacuum my bed to this day, inside joke. Anybody get it? Vacuum bed. Anybody? Slept on the floor. Sister Vereen said, Vac "Really, guys? <laughs> Did we serve the same mission? Hello, <clears throat> is this on? Anybody? <laughs> anyway, he slept <laughs> on the bed. He take apart his bed, sleep on the freaking floor. Elder Malloy, you really? I don't wow. think he mentioned that when we talked to him. Watch it again." Of, he did. I watched it. That was the one I watched. Thank you. <laughs> he did yeah. mention that. It, it, Sister Vereen said, and jokingly in his own conference, and he, she goes, "Elders make your bed, and Elder Malloy vacuum the floor." <laughs> Everybody's like, "Ah ha ha ha," you know. So yeah, that was a known thing. Elder Malloy would probably see this. Do you still sleep on the floor, dude? Probably. He probably does. <laughs> But he would dismantle the bed, so it was my bed. Okay, anyway, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I, I picked Malloy. We, we were both uh, born and raised in Nevada. He was he was a big, strong, burly dude, and he was just super easy, super chill. You know, somebody I knew I could just like we could just work and be normal and have a good time. You know, I didn't have like any secret op missions or anything I had to do, and I could just enjoy my time and serve. Part two was I, I thought really hard. I prayed and I looked at the area and I felt inspired to ask uh, President Vereens, "What is the area that you are cons that you considered the hardest to serve in?" And he said, uh, "He said uh, Cumbernauld, the the concrete jungle." Right, good pick. All right, and he said the the stake is thinking about shutting the building down and making everybody go back to Glasgow because of all the inactives that are there and they're having major problems. And I mean, I just thought. I don't want to go there. It sounds horrible. But the spirit was like, this This would be, this is where you need to go. Take Malloy with you. So I, I told Varange what I was thinking and what I felt. And he said, he said, I don't, I don't think so. He said, I, I don't, he's like that area. We're not going to send the air, missionaries there for a little while. <laughs> I just said, well, okay. You, you do your thing and pick for me. He's like, okay, fine. You're going to cover dolls. I'm like, dang it. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> and so um, I got Malloy. 
and then I got Cumbernauld. And Malloy, <laughs> he didn't find out about this till after our mission. And he was so ticked. He's like, you chose Cumbernauld? What's wrong with you? He's like, I'm like, sorry, you know. And um, I remember he got off of the bus and he just came straight from the islands. He was up there for a hot minute. He, and he'd often say that there were more sheep to talk to than people. And, right? I don't know. I never got a chance to go up there. And he said he really enjoyed it, but he said it was it was a change because he was up there for like six months or something crazy, you know. So he was like, you know, he, he got off of the uh, off of the bus and he was kind of overstimulated from Glasgow, the lights, the sound, the people, whatever. He's like, there's a lot going on, you know. <laughs> and he's kind of quiet for a while. He's like, it's I got to he's like, I got to reaccumulate to. You know, I feel like I just got voted off the island. Survivor. I've been alone talking to Wilson, my volleyball. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, I can't relate. This is whatever you need. Let's do it, you know? So, Elder Malloy and I, it was great, man. A great guy. We worked really hard. You know, I, I can probably say that about all, all my areas. We worked really, really hard. And... It was a time that I got to just be myself. I didn't have to be something else. Um, and as a result, we, we really, we really thrived in Cumbernauld. We, we baptized a family that we knocked into, a, a priesthood holder as well, and we got the the ward kind of rejazzed a little bit. They are a very interesting bunch. They're great. They're a great ward. Unlike anything you'll ever, ever witness, it it was crazy. I mean, you've got you've got people hearing your testimony just randomly start singing. <laughs> the bishop has to like escort them off, you know, because they think that's appropriate, and, and that's great. That's great. Then they go inactive. Then the elders got to go out reactivate them. They come back. And something else happens. It was like every week something would happen, and it was just crazy. It was just the, the most wild thing. I really enjoyed it. It was really entertaining. And um, so Elder Malloy and I, we, we worked hard. Uh, we were very active with the ward. And as a result, um, attendance really went up. And we worked very closely with the, the ward mission leader. And we got them involved. And we were two experienced elders in a ward that, that needed us. And, and we just thrived. And because I was comfortable, I could I could just be myself. And I knew Elder Malloy was comfortable as well. And um, I think that was easily one of the the moments where I evolved as a person, as a missionary, in great strides because I was very very comfortable. Um, also, nobody would mess with us. We used to have to run away from the pubs because the drunk people would come out, start throwing flipping bottles at us. So we learned to run. And but when it was me and Malloy, nobody messed with us. So that was neat. That was that was that was really neat. Because <laughs> uh, we're both two bigger dudes. So that was nice. That, it's a good thing to have in Cumbernauld. <laughs> yep. So we we baptized a family there in Cumbernauld and then we ended up um staying together even longer per both of our requests. Then we baptized another family. And I don't know if you guys remember Elder Vereen's like, you gotta baptize priesthood holders. We need priesthood holders, priesthood holders. And we're like, okay. And he's like, what did I say? You're like, baptize. No, priesthood holders, baptize. Okay, got it, Roger. <laughs> and um we we got an opportunity to baptize some priesthood holders and uh that was good timing, good timing for that ward. And Elder Reigns was, was very pleased with that. And that was nice. And so at the very end of my mission, he had asked me to extend. And I mean, I had honestly given everything I had in me left. I was physically exhausted, mentally exhausted. And there wasn't a second I didn't work my freaking butt off. I just grinded. And I was, I, I was, 
you know, I had to go to school and I was already enrolled. So, and I know Elder Osmond, I think, went back to school at the same time as me. And then so uh, he asked for me to extend. And instead of extending, I asked if I could go home two weeks early. He's like, that's the opposite of what I want. He said, okay, well, he said, um, if there, I don't remember how the conversation went, but the conversation went as such to how was your time with Elder Malloy and all stuff. And I said, I love Elder Malloy. He's great. I said, I, I think he would make an excellent senior elder and trainer. And that, and that was Elder Malloy's like thing. He really wanted to do was train before he went home. And, um, I said, I just wanted to throw that out there. I, I've always been one to just say it how it is. I don't, you know, whatever. So I just, I, I threw that out there. And as a result, before I went home, we were in a three-way. Me, it was Malloy and Elder Howard and myself. And I got to kind of just, you know, work with them, but I got to not be the senior companion anymore and, and get to kind of watch and, and participate and, and do all that. I got to watch him train him and, and do an excellent job. And spirit was so strong and Howard was super green behind the ears, full of energy and this happy go lucky guy. And, and we had a great experience, a great success, all three of us. And Howard was huge. I mean, he's like Jack. I mean, he's he's like your height, bro. I mean, he was a big boy. So us three walking around, we looked like the mob, like the Mormon mob. It was weird, and uh, <laughs> and you know, it it was great. You know, we we got to talk to a lot of people and had a great time and, and worked really hard. And then I went home, and I remember remember specifically flying back, and I had to convince myself. I I had convinced myself in my mind that I was never going to go home, so I never really. I didn't want to think about it. I just remember thinking how weird it was that my next area was like, a, a, you know, a flight away. Like, what is this weirdness? You know, where am I flying to? Well, you know, <laughs> and then, um, I don't know. I just, I, I really did think about it. And then when I saw my family, I remember thinking, oh crap. Like my mission's over. Wow. What? That's so crazy. So it kind of all flooded and hit me and, Got to see my family, and we were all really happy and excited, and it, it was awesome. And as Elder Stratton does, he randomly ADHD does his own thing. I got set apart at the airport because I'm a spaz, and I had to go to school. And so <laughs> I was supposed to give a talk at church, a welcome home talk, and I, I, instead, I just like pieced out and went went to school. So they said they said me and he's freaking I didn't say him. I welcome back talk dude. I was like I I gotta go to school. School's like like Monday. I got home on a Saturday. I I slept in my home bed one night and then after that I didn't go home again for seven years. Wow. Holy cow. Yep. <laughs> I just moved on, lived my life, grew up, had kids, all that stuff. So man, that is that's my summary. I'm sure, I know I left out so many details. Scotland okay. and location was awesome. We always ask people of our generation what the experience was like for you switching to or going to preach my gospel. I think we're out like six months, got the first chapter or something in a photocopy, and then got the, the full book a few months later. But Yep. We were the... So Elder Bear, when I got him, he was the first generation of preaching my gospel. And we were introduced to it as like a pilot, right, for our mission. So we got this weird mangled, like, wannabe, preach my gospel, half black and white, half, half color. Like, what is this? And remember the purple dragon? Do you remember that? Yeah, everybody knows purple dragon. Uh, purple dragon. So dumb. Uh, we had to put that away, you know. And then the the foldy, you know, weird pocket thing. I was so glad to get rid of that. We went to the the calendar book 
and all that. And nowadays they have electronics like normal adult humans have. And um, honestly, my first train of thought was there's no freaking way this soft bull crap is ever going to work. So we came from a really hardcore purple dragon, which was 72 hours a week knocking. This is your checklist. This is what you got to do. This is, you know, these are the rules. Follow the rule. You know, <laughs> like it was very strict to all of a sudden. All right, guys, do your thing. You know, like it, it was it was opposite of everything that we were taught. And I just thought, there's no way this is going to work. Like, this is way too, way too soft. You know, we're in Scotland. It's hard. We have to work hard. We have to do the hard things, and we get results. Okay. But obedience is the first trait of a missionary. So we were obedient. And at the beginning, I think the entire mission as a whole, or even across the, the world as they use to preach my gospel saw a decline in numbers initially but then as the swing came around then it really took off once once people got used to it and as new generations came in preach my gospel for sure was inspired and it put to it put put to bed a lot of the old behaviors and and was really designed for a newer generation of spiritual spiritually minded people that need to hear particular very particular things that weren't written down as a script and uh so being a part of preach my gospel was a privilege it was a privilege to be able to use it it was a privilege to be able to exercise it in scotland and to and to see the fruits of our labor and especially at the end of a mission where we actually really got to see it in action because we got we got good at it. it took a while we got good at it and so being able to baptize with the purple dragon and then baptize with preach my gospel, I, I can honestly say it it really it built a better generation of spiritually minded uh, members of the church that were prepared much better. So yes, it was absolutely inspired, very, very good. And that's why, although I still think as a joke that the elders today have it super, super easy. Um, I know that with the revelation they have been given, it is the correct thing for now that they are doing the way that they are doing it. Uh, they don't work as hard as we worked as far as what we physically did uh, or the manner in which we did it or the way in which we found or the time in which we spent with members. But what they are doing is essential to building up quality members of the church today. And it, it, it is the time for that as we get nearer to the second coming. So, preach my gospel is awesome. It, the other thing we ask about, and you've shared, you know, some of your memories with President Brains. We ask about Sister Brains as well. Just any memories you've got of them, dude. President Brains doesn't deserve her, man. Sweetest, freaking the best angel on earth, man. Sweetest lady ever so sweet and i love her humor she cracks me up she was <laughs> and she wasn't afraid to to pull you aside and tell you how it was okay if you did something out of <laughs> so just, true. right so yep. true right <laughs> i remember um mike i don't remember i'm trying to remember at the time i think my 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 shoes weren't perfectly shined and my laces were a little bit worn down and and she grabbed my arm as she did like all the time and she pulled me to the side and she nicely said she's you know in her sweet little voice elder do you know where you are I said Ch church she's like you're in the lord's house this is the lord's house look at your shoes clean them up you're in the lord's house and i was like looking at my i swear i spent like 30 minutes staring at my shoes like what's wrong with my shoes <laughs> <laughs> they need to be shined up and needed new laces that type of thing so she was she was awesome man she's very proper i learned you know i didn't grow up very etiquette style i grew up in a large family and we we're just a bunch of freaking animals and uh um i i mean 
everything from the proper etiquette to how to wait for the guests to sit down at the our you know our introduction uh, dinner when we first got there to uh, just being proper and polite uh, the correct usage of words I'm a bit of a sailor by nature but I will tell you I was an angel when I was around sister rain you better believe it no darn it's over here no siree and uh, <laughs> and you know I I saw the I saw the pair work together, uh, Sister Vereens and Brother Vereens, and they really were the just the pinnacle of the way two opposites with the gospel could pair together and just be a dynamic unit for good. They are they couldn't be more different, but their strengths are each other's weaknesses, and it's such a special thing to witness. And, and and how much stronger uh, a, a priesthood holder and man President Vreens is, and I think that's just a one way street. I'm not even say the other way, but uh, it, it's really cool. It, it's they're just a great couple. They were great examples. Uh, to this day, they, they will forever be talked about with reverence, and uh, just left behind a legacy of elders, um, just a mile wide and long. So it was a, it was a privilege to be able to just be near them. Yeah, I agree with that. Oh. And I will end on the inappropriate joke. When President Vereens would get with, I don't know if you guys did this. I'm sure you did. And don't you freaking lie. It's recorded. He would he'd get up and he would talk like this. Right, and then he would look over here, and then we would all go, <laughs> "Why? Where was his finger pointing? You guys remember?" <laughs> and <laughs> I, <laughs> and he would just be like this. He'd look over, and it was like, <laughs> and he caught me once, dude. Man, I was in so much trouble. He's like, "Don't let me catch you doing that again, Elder." I'm like, sorry. Like, yeah. by the way, how did you break your finger? I don't even remember the story, but it was it was something probably pretty epic. <laughs> I wrestled a bear or something, you know. <laughs> Gosh, man. See, that's awesome. <laughs> well, Greg, thank you for taking the time this evening. I know it's a little late for you back there on the East Coast, but made it happen. Yeah, I really enjoyed our time. Jack, I will forever love you, man. I'm sorry to make you feel uncomfortable, but I, I love you to death, homie. I do. I, I, I I'm sorry you pulled your hamstring because we raced like kids <laughs> or whatever. You know, it's all good. I love you too. Zach, we love you. Love you, brother. Yeah, we love you, Craig. Like always. It was a pleasure. Likewise. Have a good night. All right. Good night. Cheerio. Bye, guys. <laughs>